Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be a tutorial on the new Shadow Caustics feature that's in the new beta build of Blender. Now to do this, you're going to have to go to the Blender.org website. You're going to go to the download section here, and then you'll need to go right here where it says Builds. Okay, so click there, and then you'll need to download this version. And I would recommend that you save this in a separate folder. You'll have to either create a desktop shortcut manually for this or just, you know, use it from the file location just to test it out and check it out. But this is something really cool that's going to be in the 3.2 build. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys because it does seem pretty stable. So before we begin, I just want to mention that this is not to be confused with the light tracing feature that does multi-bounce like in LuxCore Render. And if you want to know more about how to make something like this, I do have this project file available on my Gumroad, so you can see the link down below. But this is specifically for LuxCore, and to check out LuxCore, you're going to need to go to my channel, go to the LuxCore playlist, and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that you can check out. And there's the Glass and Caustics one right there, so you can check out how to do that within LuxCore. But it's going to be quite a bit different than the detail that you see here. Now, just an example, I do have this project file also available on my Gumroad, but just so that you know exactly how this works in a proper scene, what you're seeing is a little bit less dramatic than what I showed you there, but you can see right here in the bottom, you can see that there's some nice patterns that are going on right here. And if we sort of go to that section in the scene, you can see that there is actually some pattern that's in the caustics refraction where we can actually see the space in there for the clear glass so that's pretty cool and it's a new feature that's going to be in blender so how do we do this make sure that you open up the new version so if i go here to the splash screen you can see here i have 3.2 beta and we're just going to create a new file it's going to be general i'm not going to save that file now to do this what we need is a general scene here and make sure that you have the 3.2 beta here so make sure that you have that and we're just going to delete the camera because we don't need that and the default cube is going to go bye bye. So let's create a plane here, S10 to scale it up. And I'm not going to have the screencast keys because this is all basic stuff that really you don't need my key presses to see here. So I'm just scaling that up and applying it. And we're just going to put a basic material on here. I'm just going to click new and we're going to go down here and we're going to change the roughness to full right there. And make sure that you change this to cycles because this works in cycles as far as I know only. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a cup. And this is going to be a really basic cup. It's going to uh, be a very generic sort of look specifically made to show off these shadow caustics. So I'm just going to bring it up like this. The bottom here, let's actually go to the object isolation mode. So we can just build this kind of like that. I'm going to create another loop cut towards the bottom like this and one towards the top kind of like that. And what we're going to do, because the shadow caustics looks really neat when you have some more geometry going on than just a basic uh, shape like this, we're also going to add a couple rings here. We're going to make this kind of like a 90s cup, uh, or at least a plastic cup that I remember from the 90s where they have these sort of like ridges in it. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to extrude it, Alt-S to scale that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the Solidify modifier because glasses are solid. And we're just going to make it kind of like that. Shade this to smooth so it looks kind of like that. And Control-2 to subdivide the surface. Now you can see that the inside has these ridges like this. And if I was going to make this for real, for a real cup, I'd probably want to make this flat on the inside. But since this is just a demo, we're just going to leave this as is. And it'll look kind of cool when we put it in there. So let's get out of the isolated mode here. And to show off the caustics a little bit better, I do notice that it does look kind of neat from this. Actually, before we do that, let's scale this all up a little bit on the Z. Let's make this a little taller like that, OK? And we're going to just rotate this a little bit on its side, put it like this, and that will be just fine. So let's grab the cup here. And we're going to make a new material, and we could open up the node editor and all that if we wanted to, but really this is rather simple. So just go here to transmission, turn this all the way up. And if we also then take the world settings here, and we're not going to put an HDRI in, we're just going to leave this as it is, and let's just take a look. And you can see here, there's our cup. 
there's the glass that's uh, the light coming through there. And if we go here and we change this, clear the uh, roughness here, let's just make this a 0 0.05. So it's not fully clear, but it's mostly clear. And then we can grab the light here and we can put it closer. Now what you're seeing here is not the shadow caustics effect. What you're seeing is basically the general way that the caustics are calculated in here. And you could try to increase the amount of caustics that you're seeing by changing some settings, maybe going here to the light paths and we'll turn on fast GI approximation, change the viewport to a 16 and the render to zero just because this will actually copy this viewport. But you can see that it pretty much looks the same. And what we're not seeing is the geometry from these ridges here being projected onto the shadow. And it kind of look, you know, just looks really, really dark. So what you could do is you could take the light and you could try to increase this brightness to like a 5,000 or something. You could change this to an area light and scale this up maybe and try to do some things like that to uh, sort of like make the effect more uh, visible. But what's always been the problem with Blender Cycles is that glass just doesn't look quite realistic. It doesn't really use the refraction properly, at least not until now. So we can actually add this shadow caustics effects by going into the project settings or the object settings right in here. And if we go to the shading, see right there shading and you go down a little bit, let's just remove some of these. You can see right here it says caustics. Now to do this, you need to set these settings for both the light or all three of these things, the light, the object that is going to be casting these caustics and the projected surface. Okay, so let's just start with this and we're going to set this to cast shadow caustics. And you can see that nothing's happened. Okay, so if I turn this off and I turn it back on, it looks the same. Now let's go to the light and let's go to the light properties right here. And you can see right there it says shadow caustic. So let's turn that on. But again, we're not seeing anything yet. So we need to go to the surface, then go here, and then underneath where it says caustics in the shading section, receive shadow caustics. And there you can see we now have that really, really cool effect where it looks a lot more realistic. The way that the geometry is calculating the caustics effect actually allows for this to happen. And before you used to have to do some tricks with the node editor and the way that it is set for the shading and the materials to do this and you have to change some of the light paths but this is actually a much more accurate way of doing this now you could go in and take the light path and still bring down the shadow intensity because this is still pretty dark for this shadow of glass but to just get right out of the gate you have this more realistic effect happening is pretty awesome to see so I know that a lot of people probably turned this off at this point and they're like, okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and do this. This looks really awesome. So I want to talk about some of the limitations so that you, when you run into them, you can get around them or just understand that there are some limitations so far because this is a new workflow. If we change this to the shader editor down here and we select the glass, we can change the refracted color here by changing the color of the glass. So that should be pretty obvious, but most people, at least if you watch my channel, you'll know that what I like to do is use a volume shader. So if I use a volume absorption node here and I pump that into the volume material output and I change this to a red, for example, and change the density to a two, for example, or maybe a 10, you can see that the glass is now red. And if I change the base color here back to a white by putting ones in all of the RGB values, you can see that the refracted color is not the color of the volume absorption. So that's a little bit of an issue. And you can get around that just by adding a slight bit of color to your glass. So you can have a darker intensity uh, volume absorption like this or something like that. And then just add a little bit of the base color down into the RGB value that you think it should be, and then you can get that refracted color to be a little bit more accurate. So that's one way of dealing with that. Now, another thing that happens, let's just get rid of the volume absorption for the moment, is that it currently doesn't deal with the normal input. So what I mean by that is, let's just take a texture here. Let's take a Voronoi, and you can see here's the Voronoi pattern. I'm just gonna leave it, you know, just the default here. And let's actually put a displacement over there so I can show you that later. Let's take the bump node, put the distance into the height. So let's just take a look at the bump node here. And you can see that 
it adds this really weird pattern to it that should be we should be seeing like chunks taken out of it stuff like that so if we take that put that into the normal and view through the shader here and i'm using node wrangler for this you can see that we have this pattern on the glass but that is not being reflected in this here you can see that it just looks the same as if this bump wasn't even here and just to show you i'll take the strength and i'll put this down to zero you can see the shadow has not changed whatsoever so the way around this is to actually use a displacement for this so if we take the distance and we put that into the height and then we take the displacement and we put it here you can see that there is the effect that's been placed here but it's only been set as basically the same thing as this bump map right here we don't see any change in the glass so what we need to do is we need to go over to the shader settings and go underneath and you see where it says displacement right here go to the settings and then underneath there you can see where it says displacement bump only so change that to displacement only and you can see that it's now taken that value and it's created this displacement map like this and it looks really really funky so take the scale maybe make this a point one or something like that and then if we look at the glass itself you can see that the shadow has now changed a lot okay so you can make this relatively small so a 0 0.01 maybe a 0 0.05 or something like that just to have a semblance of this sort of displaced effect of the glass because glass isn't 100 percent smooth and perfect you can add a little bit of displacement like that and that will reflect in your shadow caustics just like that okay so pretty neat now one other thing that i wanted to talk about and this has to just do with some of the limitations there is a limit to the number of objects you can have in a scene that has the shadow caustics and you can't really see it that closely but there is a little bit right here in the bottom left for this picture right here there is some shadow caustics going on right there but it's not as pronounced as you know you would like or something like that but that's just because i have this more lit uh naturally i guess is the best way i could say it but if you look over here you can see that we have the orange juice in this glass and you have the shadow caustics here but it looks like the shadow right in here is very very solid and if we zoom in on that section and just take a look you can see that it is very solid right there now if we take this orange juice material and uh, again you can get this on my gum road it's a pretty cool little scene but let's just change this to a glass for example okay so let's take a look at this through a glass and take out the volume you can see that it still isn't calculating that shadow caustics there okay it's not really set so that this other object that's inside is casting those shadow caustics and I've noticed that when I am putting any sort of liquid inside of an object it doesn't really cast what you would call a natural caustics effect uh, probably because the calculation is just a little bit too advanced currently for how it is set um, we can try to take the liquid out so I'm basically just selecting all of the liquid I'm going to hit P to separate this by the selection and just make sure that my settings are still there so you can see there I have it set to cast and receive since it's inside this object it should be casting and receiving but let's just remove the receiving and you can see that it still is not set there is no shadow caustics currently happening with the liquid inside the glass so unfortunately it looks like that is not quite happening and if we were to hide this you can see that those shadow caustics then come back you can see it's really bright right down in here so we should be seeing something more along those lines when the liquid is in there we should be seeing that kind of thing but with the limitation currently it looks like if something is actually inside of your object you won't see that so if you're going to do a super you know high highly realistic scene where you're featuring glass it might be a good idea to just have the glass by itself and maybe have other you know glass in the background that's filled up just to make it look nice and then have the glass in the foreground empty or something that might be a better way of going about doing it but you know i just wanted to show you that there is that limitation there so that's going to be it for this tutorial uh please leave a comment below and let me know how you feel about uh this new addition with the new beta of course it'd be really great if you could throw me a like and if you're not subscribed yet become a subscriber and 
As always, thanks so much to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And I will see you next time on DJ Tutorials.